I've been working with Meteor, I guess, since February, and it's been a blast. Um, on top of uh, the things that I'm doing, I just started a side project, I don't know, back in February, March, called Code Bounty, and a major component of that is a Chrome extension. So today we're going to be talking about um, how to build a Chrome extension. How many people in this room use Chrome as their main browser? OK, phew. That's good. <laughs> that means you guys can use the extension that we built. Um, and what's cool about Chrome is it doesn't matter what platform uh, you're using it on. If you put an extension, it'll run on any platform. So you put the extension once, it'll run on Mac, Linux, uh, Windows. OK. So today, we're going to talk about why you would build an extension with some examples in case uh, just to see what an extension is like. What are the parts of an extension? Um, how, how would you build one with Meteor? And what does that mean? And then we'll go over some complex use cases uh, using the example of what we built. So why would you build a Chrome extension? Um, there's really two reasons, two main reasons. One, you want to extend the functionality of the browser on every site. Or you want to extend the functionality of the browser on one specific site or a few specific sites. So here's some examples. LastPass. Does anybody use LastPass? Um, yeah, it's, it's helpful. Basically what it does is it stores your login credentials on the cloud and then auto-populates them in form inputs so that we don't have to remember your passwords. Um, page reload is an, is an extension. It's really simple. It, you configure how often to reload the page, and it'll continually reload the page. Uh, so you wouldn't need that with a Meteor site, of course, but maybe on Craigslist or something. Um, and then Code Bounty is what we built. It's for one specific site, which is GitHub, and it lets you post a bounty on GitHub. Um, so how do you build an extension? It's cool because it's built with stuff that we're used to, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. And Chrome also gives you a bunch of JavaScript APIs under the Chrome namespace that let you interact with the browser. And then there's also a few Chrome UI elements that you can work with as well. So here's some examples of the Chrome APIs. Uh, there's a bookmarks API, so you could view or edit the bookmarks in Chrome. There's an events API, and that's part of like every API. So for example, there's events on bookmarks that you could, whenever a user bookmarks something or removes a bookmark or changes a bookmark, you could then start some code uh, based on that event. There's a history API, so you can view the user's history or modify it. Um, and then you get into the, like shadier APIs. You can keep the, com the user's computer awake with the Power API if you want. Uh, you can intercept web traffic. You can modify it with the web request API. So, and then there's 48 other APIs. I'm not going to go through them all. <laughs> um, basically, Chrome gives you a lot of power. You can do whatever you want. And just you know, don't be malicious. Use it wisely. Um, <laughs> so on top of the JavaScript a APIs that you have, you also have a bunch of Chrome UI elements that you can work with. The, um, when you build an application, you choose if you want to make it a browser action or a page action. So a browser action would be LastPass or page reload. It happens on every site. You see it on every site. Um, a page action would be code bounty, which you only see on GitHub. So, and that just this is where your icon will show up, depending on which one you choose. There's other types of Chrome extensions. Uh, you can build themes and stuff, uh, but these are, I would say, probably the most common. And then the main UI elements you'd probably work with are the pop-up. So when you click on that icon, then you have a pop-up that you can uh, create any HTML, use it there. And then there's also, you can modify the context menu. So in LastPass, you could right-click on the input and then choose maybe a bunch of different usernames that you want to auto-populate that with. There's more advanced things. If you want to override the bookmark manager, if you want to override the history page, if you want to override the new tab page when you open a new tab, you can do that. If you want to get really crazy with it, you can even add to the developer tools of Chrome. So there's quite a few things that you can do. Um, so let's actually break one of them, these extensions apart. What's cool about Chrome extensions is you, you can inspect them just like you can inspect a web page. And that's how you build and debug Chrome extensions. So if we inspect this page reload extension, you'll see it's really simple. It's just a form with a bunch of radio buttons to let you choose how often you want the page to reload. And then when you submit the form or when you click on one of those buttons, it'll call this function uh, the set reloader function, which 
goes through each of those items, figures out how often you wanted it to reload in milliseconds, and then you don't have to read all this code. <laughs> but then it goes to the do reloader function, which if you look at that function, it calls a Chrome API, which is chrome.tabs.update URL. And that happens on an interval, so it'll continually reload the page. It's a really simple extension. So now where does Meteor fit into this? If you want to persist data, or if you want to work with your application that's built in Meteor, um, you're going to want to interact with the server, grab data, maybe manipulate it. And so far, I know of two ways that you can work a Chrome extension into the Meteor ecosystem. I'm sure there's more, though. So one way is you can use a DDP library. And that's uh, something like Meteor DDP. You can look it up on GitHub. That Meteor DDP is just a JavaScript library. You can drop it into your Chrome extension, and then you can uh, call all the server methods that you want or subscribe to collections. And it'll give you a notification if the documents change. And the other way that I know about is you can use an iframe, which if you want to use user interface elements and maybe display them in an overlay on the page, you could show those in an iframe. Uh, we use both of these. But let's go over the first one, which is Meteor DDP. And I'll do that with an example. So we could really quickly build a very simple Chrome extension uh, based off of the Meteor Parties example, which is available on the Meteor site, lets you create parties. And this extension will just tell you how many public parties there are. And it'll constantly change whenever you add a new party. So the first thing that you need with an extension is the manifest file. And this is a JSON document with a bunch of properties, name, version, description. Those are all pretty self-explanatory homepage URL. Um, icons, so this 48 pixel icon is, uh, that's the one that shows up when you look at the Chrome extensions page. Uh, if you want to enable or disable extensions, you'll see the 48 pixel one. There's also two other sizes, and you can look up where they're used. Uh, and then here, we can determine if we want it to be a page action or a browser action. So if we did a page action, like I said or showed earlier, it would show up next to the bookmarks star. But what we really want is a browser action. We want to see all the time if there's parties. So that's going to show up next to the tools drop down. And then here, we've got some background scripts. So these scripts. Um, it's just jQuery, the Meteor DDP library, and then a background script I'll go over now. These run in the background. Um, you can also have content scripts, and those would be injected in whatever page you choose to inject those in. So if we look at the background JavaScript file, it's really simple. We use Meteor DDP. We connect to our local server. Um, then we subscribe to the parties collection, and we just watch if a uh, document's been added, and then we'll increment this public parties, or if a uh, document's been removed, then we'll decrement that and we set the batch text. So let's take a quick look, prove that this works. Once you build the extension, the way that you can test it locally is you can just load an unpacked extension. That Here you just choose the folder that the extension's in. So here's our extension right here. We add a party. So we'll see that now we've got one public party that we could potentially go to. And if we remove this, it should hopefully go away. We can make this a lot more complex, but that's a really simple example of an extension. So here are some more complex things that we do with Code Bounty. And we just open sourced this today. So if you want to check it out and figure out how to do this stuff, you can just look at our source code. And feel free to hit me up on Twitter. I'm more than happy to help. Um, we added OAuth support to the Meteor DDP library. So um, if you want to access authenticated resources, like maybe your server method requires a user to have certain authorization, then you can do that now. Um, it'd be relatively trivial to add. Uh, user account support. We just haven't done that yet. So if you want to do that, feel free to talk to me about that. Um, we also we use DDP. And I went over some examples of how to use DDP, like in the Meteor Parties Chrome extension. Um, but here's how we use it. 
we subscribe to the total reward, and whenever that changes, we'll update how much money is on a certain issue. Um, but we also use two server methods. So we've got a can reward function. That means like if you've placed a bounty, can you reward it? Um, and then if you even can post a bounty, we'll show this user interface elements right here. Uh, so like if an issue is closed, you can't place a bounty. And that ha on our back end, we call the GitHub API and figure that stuff out. And then we also use an iframe. So when you're going to reward the bounty, this is actually the Meteor app running in an iframe. And this way we can use all the Meteor goodness um, reactivity. And there's more stuff that we do as well that this is reasons to check out our code base. Uh, we use require.js, so that way you can organize your code much nicer. Um, if you have a bigger extension, we use grunt like to fill in some config values. Um, and then we also have at least one way of testing. We have some end-to-end -end tests written. We need to write more of them. Uh, <laughs> but the way we do testing is we use Selenium and Cucumber.js. And it's worked out pretty well because we've got a lot of moving parts. Um, so it's a good way of doing testing. Yeah, so today, I mean, we went over, just to remind you guys, we went over why you'd maybe build an extension with some examples. Uh, and what I think is really cool about Meteor is we can build much more complex extensions these days. You can actually start to build in collaborative functionality where you're you know, starting to see things update right away. And you can start to add collaborative functionality to sites. Um, that's stuff that we're working on we haven't released yet. Um, but I definitely think Meteor enables a whole new slew of extensions. We are, what are the parts? Uh, how, how you could integrate the extension with the Meteor backend and also some more complex use cases. So this is a bunch of resources. I'll make sure that this, these slides are published somewhere and distributed. Um, check them out. And now I think we should have some time for questions. Hopefully, I didn't want to take too long to get through that. You could. Um, you can oh, sorry. So the question, <laughs> thank you for the sign. The question is, why can't you use Meteor directly in a Chrome extension? Um, why do you use the Meteor DDP library? Um, let me get back to you on that. I don't have a good answer. And I want to um, do more research. This was a really simple way to do it. Uh, Maybe there's some more complex ways that you could take off pieces. Now, with the latest re release of Meteor, I think it'd be more feasible because um, you can break apart different pieces of it. Um, so oh, I'll definitely. Because that's the easiest way to build it. Yeah, this is very simple. You just drop in this library. Yeah, let's look at that. <laughs> yep. So you wanted me to repeat the question again? <laughs> okay. The question was, why don't you use Meteor directly in the Chrome extension? Right now, I don't have a good solution for how to do that. Um, but that doesn't mean that there's not a way. So I'll follow up on that. Other questions from the room? Thank you, guys.